really it's an honor to you know be here and I thank you Indu and thank you all of you for being here and I'm going to answer these questions not truthfully uh, <laughs> but as truthfully as possible. Sita, I wanted to ask you that you know when uh, home delivery and Aladdin didn't do well then for a creative person to go through such debilitating mm -hmm. failure does it not take you to despair and despondency and how did you come out of it and how did you have the courage and conviction to then write Kahani? You know, the temptation must have been there to write a mainstream film because that is going to do well as you, as you know. The, I mean, that's not as much of a question mark as say a film like Kahani is. How did you find that courage and uh, conviction to do that and not give in to despair when films didn't do well? I think uh, we all go through life and, uh, and that's what kind of uh, shapes us in doing what we do. Uh, I mean, like, if this happened to me, if, if the debacle of home delivery and Aladdin happened to me when I was 25, or when I was 21, let's say, when I had no responsibility, I had no accountability, uh, I would have sort of uh, went to one corner, started crying, and, you know, like, uh, treated it like a complete breakup. But these things happened to me when I was a married man, I had two kids, whose school fees I had to pay, I had to take care of my wife, I had to take care of my mother. So I had a certain amount of responsibilities that was running with me. So I didn't get the luxury of sitting in one corner and crying. So I had to move on, you know, I had to fend for my family. So I think somewhere that really helped. And I had this story and yes, there was a certain temptation to uh, do a film which is uh, so-called safe. But, you know, a film is like a marriage, you know, your heart goes to a certain girl and irrespective of everybody in the world telling you, no, she's not right for you, she's not the right girl you should marry, but you end up marrying her. Um, thank God my wife's not here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know, that's what happens. So, and, and I must say, one of the main reasons I did Kahani was because of the support of Vidya Balan. Uh, she stood by me, you know, through thick and thin. Uh, that gave me a little bit of conf confidence and we just did it, you know, and, and I think yes, there is You do feel bad when your films don't do well, but in my case, I didn't have that luxury And uh, how easy or difficult was it to convince Vidya Balan to work with you? Not not for the script I'm sure the script would have convinced her, but to actually work with you. How difficult was that? Uh, not you know what happened? I, I and Vidya, uh, sorry, Vidya and I, English, so Vidya and I uh, plan to work for a long time, you know, like even before she started shooting for Ishkia. And I think from then we have been sort of kind of doing and throwing with ideas and um, trying to hit on something which would excite both of us. You know, initially uh, the plan was to make um, Kahani a hero and a heroine film. Uh, in case you're interested, the Kahani initially was the story of uh, the same girl coming to Kolkata and she meets this person called Bob Biswas, who's a hitman, uh, who's al also come to Kolkata uh, on a contract. Okay, and he kind of likes her, and he helps her, and then later he realizes the contract that he had was her. So that was the initial thought where we uh, came from, and then you know, it all went, um, yeah. and then we told Vidya, Vidya, you're the hero, uh, you carry the film on your shoulder, and if it does well, it's our credit, if it flops, it's all your fault. <laughs> so that's how we did it. On her shoulder and her pregnant belly. Yeah, on her pregnant belly. Yeah, yeah that, that also. In her pregnant belly. In yeah. her pregnant belly, yeah. 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 So in retrospect, is there anything you would change about Kahani? Or do you think it's like one of those perfect films that happen sometimes? I mean, I, I'm sure, that I, I know there are a lot of faults, but no, I, I don't think I, I want to change anything in Kahani. Because, you know, if the problem with films are, and I don't know if I'm, I, I say this from my own personal experience, you really can't learn from your mistakes. Uh, just because a film didn't do well doesn't mean uh, you figure out what went wrong and how we can rectify that and everything, you know? And similarly, when a film does well, you still don't know why the film did well. You know, there's no reason for the film for doing well, you know? Um, so it's best if the film did well, thank you God, <laughs> leave it there and uh, move on. You know, Vivek Oprah uh, told me some time back that Home Delivery was one of the most perfect scripts he had ever read. Yeah. So what went wrong? Uh, I think greed went wrong. You know what happens? Um, 
what happened when I, I was doing home delivery, I mixed up too many things. You know, I, 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 I became greedy in terms of my storytelling. I wanted to say this, I wanted to say that, I wanted to... Um, so I think somewhere I ended up saying something which the audience just didn't understand. Okay, what am I trying to say? You know, you, you, you have to... Which was what, by the way? 2005. No, no, what was it that you were trying to say? I don't know. I, 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 thought, I, you know, I, I thought I was making a very entertaining <laughs> film. And uh, people were just dropping dead while watching that film, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I felt very bad because, you know, Vivek had invested a lot of time. A lot of people invested a lot of time. Yeah. And, and, and that's the sad part of a film not doing well. Because, you know, in the forefront, you just see me. Uh, even with Kahani, I mean, I take all the glory and I get all the awards and I go up to the stage and I sit here. But it's actually my team who makes the film happen. You know, my editor, my DOP, my music director, my background. So, you know, if it does well, great. But if it doesn't, you do feel bad for uh, people. So I think home delivery, what happened, my storytelling style went for a toss. Now, in uh, just going back to Kahani for a second, is uh, your supporting cast was really, really good. And I think that was one of the major contributors also to the success of the film. Yeah. Now, two <coughs> things from that is how important is the supporting cast? Hmm. And uh, how do you pick them? I, I think in any film, uh, the supporting cast is the film. You know, like the f a any story that you're trying to tell uh, is set in a world. Okay? And the supporting cast are the people who create that world. And once they've created that world, you insert your hero, you insert your heroine, and you start telling your story. Hmm. So uh, if, if you see a film which is bare of these kind of... Uh, peripheral characters, it, it doesn't work, you know, it, it's quite stark, it's quite bare. So in uh, Kahani, I wanted to introduce Kolkata to um, people who were okay. not familiar with Kolkata. Yeah. Uh, now, I had two hours, okay? Yeah, normally when people go to Kolkata, they have about five minutes, you know, they shoot a song or they shoot a little bit of a scene. So they stick to the tram, the Howrah Bridge. Uh, the Victoria Memorial, and rightfully so, because that's the only way you can tell people this is Kolkata, right? Uh, because a lane of Kolkata is a lane of Delhi, is a lane of yeah. uh, Lucknow. So the only way I knew uh, a, a, a world differs from another world is by the people who inhabits that world. So I wanted to create a lot of these little, little people whom I have grown up with, who would represent Kolkata. Uh, so those are the people I have seen while growing up in Kolkata and I created them. And then we chose people. And, and the thing with Kolkata, uh, the regional actors, are uh, they're very, very uh, impromptu. Okay. They're very good, you know. Uh, because they're used to, because they don't have enough work in film, they do stage, they do radio, they do um, cinema. And they're extremely spontaneous. So I think uh, supporting cast is extremely important. And I had a very good casting director also called Roshmi, uh, who knew Kolkata a little. So between us, we found these people, you know. But the thing, you know what, I tell you one thing, right? When a film does well, everything about the film looks well. True. If the film does bad, nothing looks good. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. So. And on the subject of Kolkata, you know, I remember uh, the actor Prasanjit telling mm -hmm. me that you wrote the entire Kahani script in his uh, office, which he has in his bungalow. No, 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 uh, not exactly in his office, no. Uh, what happened is, uh, Bumbada, I'm, I'm, um, he always wanted me to come back uh, to Kolkata to make films in Kolkata. Uh, I really didn't want to make Bengali films. So I told him, I'll make a film in Kolkata, but I didn't know the ins and outs of Kolkata in terms of the working. Huh. Um, I had heard a lot of horror stories about Kolkata, like how people in Kolkata don't work and they're lazy and blah and blue. and um, But they're not like that. They're very good people. So you know, it, it, I was a little hesitant to work there, but then once I went in there, uh, brilliant people, you know, who made the film happen. And I, it, so, so yes, I, I did meet him, but I didn't exactly write you didn't it write in his it. office. But uh, <laughs> yeah. But your next film is again set in the northeast. Yeah. In Bengal. I mean, in Bengal. Yeah. So what is that fascination? Because you're a Bengali, because you grew up there, uh, you understand the people or the milieu there. What what exactly is that? Uh, no, because I know I can use that place to my advantage. Okay. So if I have a story which I can fit in Kolkata, um, naturally, not not forcefully. Forcefully, yeah. Uh, if I can fit that in Kolkata, 
uh, then I'll, I'd rather run with Kolkata because it's also something uh, different I can show you on screen because see cinema at the end of the day is a visual medium. So I try to give you as much, um, I, I mean as a director it's my responsibility to give you as differing images as possible. Now whether you like it or not, it's a different matter. But it's my job to present them to you and it's up to you, you know, I, I mean my constant process of being a director is to make you change. Uh, to change your thinking, to change your liking. So the more you get diverse, the better it is for me. Um, so, I mean, that's it. You know, I, I this, even with this film, uh, I could set Kolkata uh, into the film. So I did Kolkata, I did Kalimpong. Uh, so that's how we're going to do it. Okay. And when we came to your office the other day, you had this very nice um, photograph of Mr. Satyajit Three just mm. behind you. Now, how influenced are you by him? What aspect of his work? Because he's he used to do everything almost in his films. So which mm. aspect of it influences you? What are the films of his? Uh, to tell us about uh, Satyajit Ray's influence on you. How long do you have? Um, like till tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, uh, in short. <laughs> okay, to summarize. No, mm. I, I learned everything from watching his films because I'm not a trained filmmaker. Um, I came to this industry um, because I wrote a script. Um, I didn't have any experience of writing a script. Then when I wrote the script, unfortunately nobody but me understood that script. Um, so when I went to various directors saying, will you please do my film, they said, uh, for the lack of a better word, um, not a good script. <laughs> um, so since there was nobody to direct my film, I had no option but to direct it myself. And that's how I became a director. Um, but I didn't have any experience. But my learning has been by watching Ray's films. Uh, his way of storytelling. Mm -hmm. What I learned from Ray is, see the problem with us as a filmmaker, what happens? Uh, to represent things on screen. How do I represent things on screen? Because there are only some basic emotions that you have. You have love, you have anger, you have happiness, you have you know various, various moments that you incur in your own personal life. So how do I represent that on screen? Hmm. Because you have already shown uh, two flowers doing something, you have shown two, a couple doing something. So you have taken away all my images. So I have to keep thinking of new images, keep thinking of uh, uh, expressing um, yes. things. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example, for example, uh, which I have. So what I do is I learn from Ray and then I copy it in my films. Uh, not copy in the thought process of uh, scene to scene, but the way he teaches you. I'll give you an example. Um, there's a film called Nayak of Ray. Okay, the Nayak is about a big hero suddenly decides to go to uh, from Kolkata to Delhi, but he decides to travel by train, which is unheard of those days because you know a big superstar like Shahrukh Khan uh, traveling in a train. So he gets into a train and he's a huge hero, right? So. Ray had to represent that a hero had come into a train. He had to represent the fact that the hero is uh, here and everybody looks to him as a hero. So what he does is he, he builds up the whole thing. Uh, just before he enters the train, we see the compartment he's going to, the first class compartment, he's going to uh, ultimately go and travel in. There's a family in there and there's a little girl who wants to drink some orange squash. Okay. so. He, her father is trying to open the bottle, which is quite tight. The squash bottle is really tight. So the father is like, uh, 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 but it's really tight, but you need really strong. In comes Uttam Kumar, takes the bottle and taka, opens it. And suddenly you see this little girl's eyes and wow, what a hero. He just opened the bottle for me, which nobody could do. You know, that's the whole concept of a hero to be able to do things uh, which nobody else can do. So that's the concept, that's how Ray taught us. If you want to represent someone as a hero, get him to do something impossible which nobody else can do. As a result, yeah. So this is what I do. What I do before Vidya Bhakshi comes into the police station, I show you Rana. Sorry if you haven't seen Kahani, I'm, I'm just assuming some of you have seen. I, see, I show you Rana struggling with a computer. He cannot fathom that computer out, right? He just cannot fathom that computer out. It has beaten the life out of him. So he's fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, kuch nahi ho in comes Vidya Bhakshi, she goes, she goes tak 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 and the problem is solved and suddenly in Rana's eyes, wow, a hero, you know, yeah. like this lady is a hero, she can do something which I can't and as a result, his infatuation for the woman starts from that point, 
okay, she can do something which is not capable, uh, I'm not capable of. So these are the thoughts that I copy yeah. and paste. And imagery uh, also, uh, you know, in, because there's uh, films, the cinematography also is it's always very different and very, mm. uh, very artistic. You yeah. know, each, it, each, each frame is almost like a picture postcard. Do you also believe because your film is uh, much darker? So that's not something you have picked no, up. No, that from was him? because of Shubhrata Mitra. You know, like when you see a movie of Ray like Mohanagar, you know, each 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 frame is a picture postcard. Yeah. Uh, but that's because that gentleman himself, he was a still photographer who became a film photographer by mistake. Okay, so, so. Um, yeah. Um, but but you know, like um, each film is like a painting. Um, each has its own demand of colors and style and palette. So I think, like when we did Kahani, uh, we had to do it in a kind of a documentary manner where you're traveling with the lady in Kolkata. Right. So the camera had to move a lot. You know, it yeah. was a lot of handheld, it was a lot of uh, uh, movement. So you get the feel that you're walking with her in the streets of Calcutta. Yes. Without going too documentary. <laughs> then you put people off. You know, so it's just, and, and I think therein lies uh, the caliber of a very good cinematographer. Because in my case, I didn't have to do anything. I have to just tell my uh, cinematographer called Setu. He said, I need this. And he gave it to me. Excellent. So, and, and, and so sweet of you to do that. No, no, I'm telling you, man. Kahani, I, I take all the glory. But actual work is done by my DOP, my associate director, my editor. Uh, they are the key. And were you always a film buff? Because uh, I, you did, as you said, you weren't trained in cinema uh, at all. Mm. You didn't assist anybody, isn't no, it? No. So uh, were you always a film buff? And so you picked up bits and pieces, as it were, from people and they influenced you and then you went ahead? No, no, no. I, film buff, I was just a pure, unadulterated Amitabh Bachchan fan. I'm still am. Okay, this is, this is what I am. I'm an Amitabh Bachchan fan. And that's the only films I used to see when I used to grow up. You know, and, and I stood in queue, I stood in the heat, I stood in the rain, and that's my f film buffest as I could <laughs> get. Um, because rest of the films I didn't understand. You know, those days I didn't understand when I saw Shatranj Ke Khilari. I didn't understand when I saw Umrao Jan. Uh, somebody showed me that film, you know, that Bunuel film, uh, the obscure object of desire where there's two heroines. And I was watching that film, I'm thinking, what's going on, man? This woman keeps changing into another woman. You know, it was damn boring. <laughs> so, uh, I like Amitabh Bachchan films. You know, I like films like uh, Mukaddar Ka Sikandar, which I thought was the best Devdas ever. You know, I, I wanted to see things like that. You know, you take a Devdas and you turn it into a Mukaddar Ka Sikandar, you show it to me, I'm very happy. <laughs> so that's my... Uh, yeah. So tell us, uh, you worked then with Amitabh, that must have been uh, high for you at that oh point, yeah, right? Big, big time. High. So tell us something about his working style and yeah. uh, uh, maybe an anecdote or two. Of, no, no. He, or were you overawed by him and you were not directing him? Did that also happen at times? It does happen at certain times. Um, but I, I think with, with somebody uh, as senior as uh, Sir, what happens is, you know, he knows it. He, he sees films seven moves ahead you do. Okay. Like before I know this camera angle is going to cause a problem, he knows that that camera angle is going to cause a problem. So he'll stand, you know, if I've given a mark there, he'll go and stand there. Okay. And I'm thinking, why is he standing there? And soon enough, somebody will tell, no, 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 we have to change the angle. And the mark becomes there. So that's Excellent. how he is. So, okay. yeah. And uh, so, uh, as I just said, were you ever like overawed by him and uh, did you ever allow Amitabh Bachchan's persona to override your director in, in when you were making a film with him? Because that could happen, you know? When you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does happen. I, I must admit it does happen. But you know, he's too senior. You know, there's a he's line you cannot cross with senior people like that. You know, he's too senior. And yes, I'm a lot of awe of him. So I think somewhere maybe I did compromise, but he, you, you can't tell him to do things, yeah? He's too senior. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's Amitabh Bachchan, man. I'm like, I can't <laughs> tell him to do things. Yeah, yeah. I won't also, I'm like. So actually, as an actor, he's a person who likes to be told. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. I, I tell him as much as I can. Uh, but uh, yeah, next film, I'll, I'll make sure I tell him everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, would you ever care to remake a film? You know, this remake and all that is going on so much all over in the Hindi film industry. Would you ever, and if yes, which film would you like to remake? No, I, I'm unfortunately no. You wouldn't? No, no, there's so much stories around, man. There's so much books around, there's so much uh, concepts around and uh, uh, remake. You know, see, I have a s serious uh, issue of remake. See, if I make a film today, okay, which is 2014, mm -hmm. 14, no, 14, 14, so my film gets released in 2015, okay. Now, I have to make a film which will suit the palette of 2015, yeah. okay, because given the current world that we live in, the taste is changing every day, you know, your, your taste is changing, your, your, your outlook to things are changing, your acceptance of things are broadening. So I, I keep catching up, you know, I play catch up with all of you. Right. I, I'm trying to think what will you think in 2015. So when my film comes out in 2015, what kind of music you would like? What kind of colors you would prefer? What kind of topics would you like? With the remake, what happens, I've already put myself three years back. Hmm. By the time my film comes, it's another two years. Yeah. So I'm already presenting to you a film which is five years old. So more than likely, you're going to chuck it out of the window. You know, so, so that's my serious apprehension about uh, remakes, remakes yeah. Yeah. yeah, true, true. Because I can't play catch up with remakes. <laughs> you know, some directors, and I'm talking, asking you to be a little indiscreet here. Make this. Uh, no, you are not. You. I'm not. I'm not hinting at you because uh, you make different stories each time. But some directors actually remake the same film. Not remake. They make the same film again and again. What would you say to such directors? I mean, I could in uh, private sometime tell you like ten of them. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think it's each to his own. Ray. I mean, like. Uh, it's, it's your comfort zone, you know, uh, where you feel uh, you're most able or competent to tell a story. And if it's saying the same thing over and over again, uh, then so be it. But I think what's happening now, uh, the audience is becoming uh, increasingly accepting, but at the same time, very strict also. You know, yeah. I, I mean, they will give you a chance, like they gave me a chance after Aladdin. They said, okay, we'll let you make Kahani. So I, I think we keep getting these little opportunities. If you don't run with them, sooner or later, you're going to get, you know, it's just a process of sure. evolution. Okay, now when you scripture another director, as for example, Bang Bang, the current film that you've mm. just written, is it like fathering a child and then letting go of him? Or are you okay, blase about it? No, no, no. It, it, it's what you have been employed for. I mean, I was employed as a writer on that uh, uh, on that project, and on my contract, it clearly said I'm a writer. If need be, they'll change me. That's right. Okay. So I, I, when I went into the whole thing, uh, I, I went in as a writer. So you don't get emotionally attached to it. That's correct. No, I am emotionally attached, but as a writer. Okay. Yeah. But is it actually able to separate yourself that way from something yeah. that is your creation yeah. eventually? Yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not separating itself. I'm just, you know, I'm. I'm just maintaining my. How would I say? The lines my Lakshman Rekha. Okay. You know, okay. I, I, and I think in every uh, path of life, I I try to do that because you know when you cross that Lakshman Rekha, it only creates problem. You know, so as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a writer, as a director, uh, I I stay within my limits. I I don't cross my. Uh, That's especially good as a husband. That's really good to do. Yeah. You know, you keep referring to yourself as a husband and a father and all this. And there's so little about the husband and father part of you. In uh. If you look up Wikipedia, if you look up, uh, you know, for generally one Googles you. Uh. Tell me something about you. Your, not, I wouldn't say personal life, but like what is this business of your wife living in another country and all that? You need to ask her. I mean, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm I, asking you. I have two kids who studies abroad, so she stays with them. But now she stays with me more because my kids are in university now. I have big kids. So they're all in university. Um, so now my wife can stay with me. That's it. That's the end of the personal story. Yeah, it's very boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. Uh, but she did stay with them. That's why she used to be out. But now she stays with me. Okay. Uh, who are the makers, filmmakers, mm. uh, not necessarily of the past, but even the current ones, that you admire one? And who are the makers that you would suggest to, you know, most of these people here are aspiring writers, directors, actors, okay. sort of thing. Who are the ones that you would recommend that films that they should see, people whose films they should see? It will help them in their craft. Okay, who are you admire of to begin with? No, I, I see everybody's film. No, no, you only see Amitabh Bachchan. 
No, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> that I definitely see. Um, no, I mean, I mean, you should see everybody's film, actually. I mean, I mean starting from Raju's work, at who I think is one of the most finest uh, director that we have, Rajkumar Hirani, mm -hmm. uh, to even uh, somebody like David Dhawan Saab, who actually still fighting fit at this age and after some 28 odd films, you know. And, and I think you should see film. I Rohit mean, Shetty? Yeah, you must see Rohit Shetty's film. Okay. It's very entertaining. I mean, must the like, type of film? You saw it? See, the first Masti I really liked, the second Masti, I, I, uh, second Masti, it was a little uh, too much for me <laughs> because I didn't realize, uh, so I actually had gone with my daughter to see that film. <laughs> so I have never forgiven Ritesh for that, for not telling him. Um, but you know, it, it's, you have to push the envelope, you cannot blame them because if you're making a film which is a sex comedy, then make a film on sex comedy. There's no point saying I'm going to make a film on sex comedy, but I'm going to be very timid about it. I'm going to shy away from it, right? Because, right. Yeah. you know, at the end of the day, if you think of the commerce of the whole thing, they're going to get an adult certificate, right? So if you are going to get an adult certificate, you might as well push the envelope. Be adult. Yeah, be adult about yeah, it. Which true. is, I think, it's okay. I think it's healthy about the, uh, it's quite okay. So okay. I cannot, um, point fingers and say ke nahi, tumko aisa nahi karna chahiye, or you shouldn't do things like that because main hota hi kaun Okay, and who are the makers you would suggest that uh, anyone who's interested in making a career in films at hmm. whichever way, who are the people whose films they should definitely see? Because it would be a learning experience. See Ray, you must see Shat Satyajit Ray. And if you see all these uh, stalwart Hindi filmmakers like uh, Yash Chopra, Raj Khosla, Rishikesh Mukherjee, um, Bimal Roy, Gurudat, or oh, not that far back. Bimal Roy, Gurudat, um, <laughs> David Dhawan, Rohit Shetty, Rajkumar Hirani, you know, all the new kids on the block uh, like Ayan and Siddharth and see everybody's film, eh? you're a student of film, see everybody's film, you know, some you like, some you won't, as simple as that, you know, and, and I think that's how it should be, uh, that's how taste develop, that's how uh, changes occur. You know, uh, I think that's the best way of doing things. Uh, now, you know, this is one question that I like to ask, especially new age directors like you. Is, new age? Yeah, different, sort of not mainstream. Mm. You know, there used to be a lot of these mainstream cliches, the widowed mother who was always coughing, the handicapped brother, the, the sister, you know, these sort of typical cliches, mm. the straight-laced hero, heroine, villain, vamp type mm. of thing. Now, all these are no longer there in today's yeah. films. Yeah. But is there any cliche that you would love to resurrect? Because it's just so easy to take the script forward when you have a cliche like that. Oh, is there anything? A mother. You miss the mother part of it? No, I, I still I carry it in my films. All my film has a mother. And I think that's Who was a, your mother in Kahani? A big lady with a pregnant Achha, that way mother. Achha, okay. Uh -huh. No, but you didn't have a mother character, no? <laughs> so, so, no, no, no. I, and I think, uh, I think emotion-wise, what Manmohan Desai has taught us, and also Yashji has taught us, you know, you cannot beat a mother. Uh, I, mean, I mean, do whatever you want, but this is one emotion which is universal and you cannot, cannot, and if you have a good story around a mother, I feel you have a lot of chance of people identifying with the story. Whether they like it or not, I don't know. Huh. I mean, they could uh -huh. easily hate it also. But I think certain emotional stuff, I, I mean, like when you say a film like Two States, for example, you know, I, I saw Two States, I don't know. Have you seen Two States? Yes. Yes. I, I really like that part about him and his father. Because that's the story of most of us with our father. I mean, my father, uh, that earlier generation, who was very strict and who knew it all, you know, before I could say, he would tell me, no, let me tell you how to make a film. Sorry, you don't know how to make a film. So, um, yeah. you know, uh, so you identify. It's, it's very important in a film uh, to be able to identify what's happening. Um, then it makes yours, you know, then you yeah. become... Yeah. Yours and I, and I think those what we call cliched are things which you can identify with. Maybe in those days, you had very black and white things like a hero, heroine, vamp, um, uh, villain, villain, etc., etc. Right? And if you think of the surrounding those days, you had only one newspaper, one radio. TV had still not come in. Right? Then slowly TV comes in, internet comes in, the world becomes smaller. Uh, there are much more news channel. The news channels are running out of stories. So they start doing news which they didn't used to do before. So the news are getting diverse. So you get to learn more about good people who are actually bad. So now, in our head, 
whom we thought good can also be bad. Yeah. So now we can make a hero also a villain, because you know, uh, you know, they're not only just good and bad. Yeah. It's a mix. Uh, a, a person can be uh, handicap and run as well. So you put that in. So I, I'm saying, you know, as the environment changes, as your taste changes, we try to incorporate that in our films. As simple as that, you know, uh, we try to exploit that to a certain extent. But just taking the mother motive a little ahead, um, hmm. so is Karan Arjun your favorite film? One of my favorite films. Is it because of the mother factor? I think it was a combination of all. I think my, my favorite mother film is Diwar. Okay. That is the ultimate mother film. Yeah, that, my, that's my uh, favorite mother film is Diwar, Amar Granthini, uh, Karan Arjun, Mary Jung. Uh, I really like these films. I, I really like the fact. Okay, for a guy, how do you understand such strong female characters like Kahani? Like, I'm presuming your next one, uh, mm. because it is what a mother and child will have a strong female character. Mm. So, how do you understand? What are your reference points? I don't say a wife only. I mean, uh, what you see around you, and I think that's uh, that that becomes your reference point. Because honestly speaking, a lot of it does come from my own family, uh, because. Um, I have seen my mother, I have seen uh, my friends' mothers. I, I mean, you get to see, you get to meet people, you get to see how they behave, you learn from them. And, and that's what you try and incorporate uh, in a film. You, know? you have also forayed into acting now. Why do we have to reveal that? <laughs> <laughs> because mm -hmm. that's one more aspect of your personality. And so tell me, uh, how did that happen? For one, is it a different high? And another thing that I want to know is that um, who has more responsibility for a film? Is it the actor or is it the director? Okay. Um, you, you really don't want to know about this thing that I did um, because nobody saw it. Um, but it's got very good reviews. I read them. Really? Huh? I didn't read those ones. Okay. <laughs> I read the ones which didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, uh, we, I, I, we did a Bengali film because I don't know if you know of this director called Ritu Ghosh. Of course. In fact, he's probably the best writer-director we have after Ray. So if you ever want to catch up on any uh, film of Rituda, please do because it's incredible the way the man writes and the way uh, he directed his films. So he wanted to make a film uh, and he wanted me to, for whatever reason best known to him, uh, act in it. Um, and like it's impossible to say to no to that man, you know, it's in, impossible. So I did it and I think it was a great experience because, you know, uh, as an actor, you're carrying a different kind of responsibility towards the film, yeah. which I wouldn't have realized, uh, you know. Um, it, it's very easy for me to tell Mr. Bachchan, sir, can you please do this? But to do that, I have now realized what another person has to go through. Uh, in order to do what um, uh, the director is asking or uh, requesting for. But it, was it like a, was it exciting? Was it a high? Did you get a high? Yeah, it's a it? huge high. It's a huge high because uh, it does pamper your ego a lot. You know, that, oh my God, you know, like you, you see yourself in a poster. Um, you know, it, it's a very false kind of a, a boost that you get into your system. But it's good. It's good to get once in a while, yeah. Even though the film flop like Titanic. Um, it's okay. I mean, a lot of my films flopped. You know? I'm used to flops. Your first film, Jankar Beats, obviously told us that you were this great R.D. Burman fan. I mean, that was, that was obviously the reason for that film, right? Yeah. And for writing that film. And subsequently, you've done all your films with Vishal Shekhar. Mm. So evidently, they are also a huge influence on your music uh, yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. So what are your other music influences? You mean in terms of... Uh, in, in terms of uh, people who lend music to your life, as it were. No, I, I mean, I listen to all music, you know. I, I mean, I, I am a great, big Adi Burman fan. Uh, but I also know uh, Lakshmi Kant Pyaralal and Kalyan Janaji and Bappi Lahiri and Shankar Jaikishan and Anand Milind and Nadim Shravan and uh, Jatin Lalit. I, I know all of them. Okay. But I just happen to be an Adi Burman fan. Uh, I happen to be an Amitabh Bachchan fan, but I know all the other actors. I, I've seen all of their films. Um, music, you know, I, I tend to use Vishal Shekhar because they come free. You know, most of my films don't have a budget, so 
and these people work free for me. So I'm good, yeah, kalle. Okay. Um, and because we started our struggle together. Together. You know, when we were all used to hang out together and we never had a film, so we were all walking <laughs> and trying to find jobs together. Um, so, I mean, that's it, no? So now, uh, you know, a lot of people here, because this, basically everybody in Bombay has a script, right? Yeah. So a lot of people here being aspiring writers and script writers, actors, everybody possibly has a script. Now, I'm not saying particularly about here, the people are here. But if you have a script and you are not from the industry, hmm. what do you do with it? You knock on every possible door. Uh, and I'm telling you, there's no alternative to this. Uh, you knock on every possible door. Uh, but now what's happening is some of the corporates like UTV and uh, similar, they have a system whereupon you have to submit your script and that gets assessed and um, you know, it gets made if they like it. But there is no alternative to this, you know, unless um, you have to have to knock on doors, you have to go and narrate your uh, script. script. And uh, one last question on the question of scripts is, on an average, when, because you're a writer too, how many scripts, how many ideas convert into scripts? Not many. So you mean there are lots of ideas and few of them convert into scripts, that's what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you keep, um, again, you know, I'm playing catch up here. So a lot of ideas come, but I think, okay, in, in two years down the road, with people will really, will like I have a lot of scripts which I, I can't do anything with. When I wrote them, they were, for me, they were the best scripts on the face of universe. But right now, when I read them, uh, as much as I like them, I know if I present them to you, uh, you won't even look twice at them. Okay. So you have to be a little uh, cruel about the whole thing. Even though they're yours. Yeah, you have to be cruel about the whole thing. Um, so, you know, you do get a lot of ideas. And then you think, okay, uh, what will fly, you know, uh, and take it on. Okay, that was my last question. Mm -hmm.